is a nicely led on from the previous talk. I'm going to be um, talking about alternatives to agent-based modeling, um, because I guess during this whole conference we're going to hear so much about agent-based modeling, but there are some other methods, so let's talk about them. Um, but first of all, why do we use agent-based models? Um, sorry. So usually it's, to un it's usually when we understand the behaviours of individuals, um, but you don't understand the global behaviour of the system. So um, what you can sometimes see in an agent-based model is complex behaviour emerging from really simple interactions, like we saw in the flocking behaviour. Um, and when we decide to make an agent-based model, it's usually to answer two questions broadly. What happens when you run the model for X iterations? And what happens when you change certain parameter values? How does that affect your result? But it's not always necessary to use an agent-based model for this. And these, aren't, these questions can be answered using different types of models. So I'm going to describe four other types of models and give very short um, examples on them. So first of all, the cellular automata. Um, which some of you have probably heard of before since they're quite similar to agent-based models. Um, and in these, you have um, a grid of cells and they can be in a number of states, um, but they're static and they only interact with their neighbors. So this is really different to an agent-based model where the agent can move around, it can co-occupy the same area as another agent, it can update its behavior, um, and also the behavior of the cells are all the same. Um, so for example, in the evolution of cooperation, we have um, on the left panel is a grid of cells and some of them are either defectors in red or cooperators in blue. And they play the um, prisoner's dilemma with their neighbors. They and you run it through various iterations and you start seeing clustering behaviours of the cooperators. So that's, that's one example. Um, another type of approach is system dynamics. And in here, you're modelling the behaviour of a whole system, so it's not individual based like agent based modelling and cellular automata is. Mm -hmm. um, and it's particularly focused on the behaviour of feedback loops within the system. And it's also deterministic, so every time you run this model, you get exactly the same result. So, for example, um, there is a system dynamic model of uh, Bronze Age salt mine dynamics, and it's kind of a bit small, but um, what you have here is like lots of different processes. Um, so, for example, it could be um, people being born and some of them going into the support for the mine um, and so on. And these are all determined by um, differential equations. Um, and also there's discrete event simulation. So I think of these, I may be wrong, as a kind of similar to agent-based modeling. However, the agents or entities, which they'd be better described, don't have autonomy. They're not, they're just passive. They just go through this system um, and all the processes are coded within the steps of the system. And it's also stochastic. So here, um, not a very archaeological example, but um, going through a bank and the kind of dots of you could think of them as agents but they kind of just go through the process and um, there's a result at the end. And finally, um, quadrant based models. So these are like, I think you'd be really lucky if you can do an equation based model. Um, not only are they quite hard to think of but um, I don't think it's possible for a lot of really complicated things. But if you can do it and you've got a ni nice equation for it, then that's really great. All you have to do is input your parameters, run the, the equation and get a result. So that would be great. Um, so there's an example of a model for population dispersal. 
And here we have this really elegant, nice equation that just shows you how the population density at certain um, positions in space changes with time. And all you have to do is input the parameters and then find out what population density is at different points. Um, <coughs> so I guess the point of all this is before you start coding an agent-based model, think about the alternatives. Think about whether the actual question you're trying to answer needs an agent-based model or whether there's a more appropriate modeling type. And I just want to stress that this is not, um, by all means, all the uh, categories. Brilliant. Thank you. Genius, you should publish this. <laughs> wow. So why why are we all using agent-based modeling? And I'm looking at people that are modelers and they use agent-based modeling. Because why? It's fun. It is fun, yeah, I know. But <laughs> it's like bad science if you do something for fun. Well, could be. Because we don't know how to do calculus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I do agree, there's a skill gap because not everyone's a mathematician like Exactly, yeah. I think, I think there's a natural attraction in archaeology to the principle of emergence. I think the idea of, of, of an emergent phenomena is kind of intrinsic to our understanding of not only how societies operate, but also how the archaeological record operates as something that's an accumulative, um, uh, that, that, that operates as an accumulative entity. Mm -hmm. You can have forms of emergence coming out of... Mm -hmm. I mean, from system dynamics, from, from, pretty much from, at all times. From cellular automata. From well. cellular automata, I mean, automata yeah. Arguably, cellular automata and agent-based modeling, the only, you know, the only distinction there is really that the agents don't move. It's not a particle-based system. Yeah. But from equation-based ones, you can have some emergence coming as well. I, I think that our systems are generally too complicated for many of these approaches. I think we've made them too complicated. Mm. <laughs> well, I think that some things I, I've done equation models in my papers, and I think that some things can be very simple. But I think a lot of things are just way too complicated. And I don't necessarily think agent-based modeling is fun. So <laughs> I, I do it, and I think that it is a useful tool. But so is ceramic analysis and things like that. And so there are lots of different tools for different kinds of archaeological questions. So I don't do it for the fun of it. It's, I mean, there's the level of abstraction. I mean, the, the spatial and temporal resolution of your research question is very relevant here. If you're talking about hominin dispersal, then yes, you know, there are little individuals making mobility decisions about that. But it is always going to be on, you know, scale. continent scale. And yes, you can focus down on the individuals and like what they choose to have for breakfast, but it's not really appropriate for that scale of a question. And so a lot of, especially a lot of the early dispersal models were equation based because you could capture that broad spatial and temporal scale with an equation based model. Um, the interesting parts now are when the model doesn't capture some specific element of that, and then you have to sort of add in a little complexity. Maybe you can get away with doing that with calculus too, but there becomes a point where you're trying to get down to a more spatial and temporal granularity that you start having to use a different tool. Um, as on the flowchart there, when your entities become more heterogeneous, when you can't average out individual variation anymore, then you have to kind of switch gears and try something else. And I think uh, I'm, I'm wait. I mean, it already happened, but it's not that common. But it will happen eventually that we will have more and more models that are a combination of those techniques. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be genius. Because there are some processes that are just like population growth. You don't really have to model your agents. You know, there are males and females, and they, they and they make babies. You, you you know how this process goes. You can outsource it to the equation. It's going to speed up the simulation dramatically. It will remove the stochasticity from this bit. It's just it's just a win-win situation. It's just I would say the technical, like the. Yeah, the technical gap, the, the skill gap, is the main thing that keeps us, holds us 
away from that. Yeah, perhaps. And it, I guess it's like a chicken and the egg problem that you're, you know, whenever I read about models in archaeology, they are often agent-based, and then you know that's going to feed into what I know about agent-based modeling or modeling. Um, but you know, maybe there are some more appropriate ways.